Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, buttoning up some loose ends here on the uh, the build, but uh, it's 15 degrees on it, so I got the doors down. And one thing nice about, if you have the chance to do a, a frame off build, uh, where the body's off the car or you're building it for the first time like I am, um, it's nice to be able to uh, have a rolling chassis made. Yeah, so working out the kinks, everything's easy to get to, the brakes, radiator, all that stuff. And what happened is during the uh, last few days, um, I developed a leak uh, right up in here. The thermostat housing is leaking around the bottom and dripping down onto the floor. So I need to drain it again, which I am doing and uh, it's all drained and I'll pull the upper hoses off and take this thermostat housing off of here. Uh, it's not the hose leaking, it's actually the gasket, which is kind of strange because I did use a fiber gasket and I even used ultra black silicone on both sides of the gasket before I put the thermostat housing. But for some reason, it is still leaking up in here. It's just a slow leak. So uh, if I were to wait, and fill up the radiator with the body on it'd be really hard to get to it's still doable but so nice just having it here to work on so tackle this and then bring you back all right so the uh the leak the slight leak i had coming out of the thermostat housing is fixed what it was is the uh, thermostat itself uh, i have replaced and there are two little legs um, that come up from the thermostat to hold it into the block and those legs kind of sit in the recessed flange a uh, little groove that goes around the actual thermostat housing and uh, the little leg on the driver's side was sticking up a little bit in the flange and preventing the thermostat from holding down flat thus compressing the gasket and uh, the seal that I had on there so took it out hammered a little bit ground it down a little bit so it fit into the recess and now it's totally seated. I installed the e-brake handle uh, into the fiberglass drive shaft tunnel here and uh, kind of recap I have like most cars drum brakes in the back and I have the emergency brake cable that goes up I was able to use the existing brackets and mounted the little brackets uh, right on the inside of the tunnel you can see that up in there um, simply bolted it to the side with 5 16 inch bolts. Uh, on either side. So there's a loop in the cable uh, right underneath here. I'll go underneath and show it to you in a minute. But I was able to source a yoke, uh, which is just like a crescent shaped yoke uh, that goes in the center of the cable. And the idea is that the cable can slip inside, and I greased it up a little bit, slip inside so when that yoke is pulled by the mercy brake handle on the bottom that it kind of balances out left and right by letting the cable slip inside that little crescent shaped uh, groove. So this is a e-brake handle. You can just get these on eBay, about 130 bucks or so. Um, and this is made by, I think it was Lokar that makes it L-O-K-A-R. And uh, it has a couple little wings. You bolt it from underneath and uh, yeah, so it just operates like a standard emergency brake cable. So uh, let's go underneath and I'll show you how I did it. All right, should be able to see that. So here's the bottom of the e-brake right in here. And this lever pulls back as you move the handle up. And there's like a little clevis here uh, with a pin going in it and a cotter pin. And uh, here's the yoke that I just talked about, uh, that the cable is slipping inside there freely. Um, I took a yoke, I think it's off of an old Chrysler that I found on eBay, and I used that. And then I made a, a small bracket here, an L bracket, out of a piece of one inch angle that I had in a scrap pow. Took a piece of uh, ready rod, or all thread, whatever you want to call it. And uh, this is 5 16 And this allows me to adjust this back and forth to adjust my tension. So this is right where I want it right now with a little bit of slack. And uh, I was able to drill and tap 5 16 hole, 18 threads, and tap that thread into the bottom of the yoke after I drilled it and then uh, to be on the safe side to hold it in there after it threaded the rod into this clevis uh, I put a piece of weld on there just hit it with my MIG welder and uh, that holds it permanent so that worked out really well and now I'll check off the e-brake uh, on my list on my whiteboard it is done so I did a lot of this work off camera for the seat buckets um, 
I got the buckets uh, with the car and uh, they were just a fiberglass piece. But what I needed to do is, um, turn this over, take a look, is mount the, some OSB half inch onto the back. So I just took that, uh, put it on the back, and then I used 10, number 10, three quarter inch screws, drill through the fiberglass to mount that. And this is gonna provide me a tack strip when I put the upholstery on to be able to use my uh, stapler, my air stapler to tack the material onto it. And then I did the same thing on the bottom, another piece of half inch, and again, the screws, 10 three quarter inch screws going into it to hold it in place. And I was able to source two seat, two pairs of seat sliders on eBay, I think they were like 30 bucks a piece, and uh, bolted them in, and they're 5 16 inch bolts going through the seat track um, on either, and I'll just grind these off um, so it's a good length. Plus, it's all going to be foam in here anyway, it should be okay. Um, so I took care of that. The adjuster, basically the lever that you would pull up off the floor to release the seat track so you slide the seat forward and back. Um, that was way too wide. This, these tracks are made for a seat that's probably out the bot here, like a normal car, but these are real narrow buckets. Um, so what I did is I took this rod, adjustment rod off, cut it, and then I bent a piece of this rod and uh, heated it up and bent it and then welded it back in shape and I'll clean that up and paint it. But normally this would have been kind of like that over to the other track and it's just spring tension holding it into the place. So to release, all I do, imagine this, you know, in normal position, you're gonna pull up on this and this lever is gonna go up and down, slide the seat and then lift back up again. Turn this back over. And so I'm left with this point here, and I figured I want to be able to easily pull this up uh, like that to release, release the track. So I'm gonna take a piece of rod. I was thinking about putting a knob or something on here, bending it up, but I have another piece of rod here, same stuff. And what I'll do is I'll just tack it on. That way, when you're sitting in a seat, you just reach here, a couple fingers, and just pull it up. It's not that difficult. So I'm gonna take, I think that'll look pretty cool. Weld that on there, a couple tacks on either side from underneath, paint it all black, clean up the welds a little bit, and then I'm done. And then I'll mount them. And to mount these, I need to drill down through the car frame, 5 16 inch carriage bolts, and they're like six inches long. And I'll do that uh, after I get this all done. But that's an update on the seats, looking pretty good, pretty pleased with that. The seats are in, installed. I got the seat belts in, they work great. And bolted uh, the tracks right down through the frame of the car and uh, made this little bracket here so the seats slide up and back. And I'm five foot ten and a half, and I'm probably average height uh, out there right now. So I put the seat tracks in the zero position at my height, so I'm comfortable pushing a pellet. So I'm comfortable pushing the pedals and the seat will go up closer about three inches for somebody shorter and then somebody taller than me getting over six feet can take the seat back three inches and that finishes that and uh, scratched it off the list. The last item on my punch list is the muffler and uh, those who have been following the build know that I got a really good smoking deal on stainless steel headers for like 75 bucks close to that free shipping delivered, I couldn't pass on that. And they're going down below the uh, the firewall. And I bought some muffler parts and I was able to fabricate up the muffler. And what I've got is a three inch adapter down to two and a quarter and uh, about a 30 degree elbow. I was able to cut this and cut the flange and I just have a tack weld it. I'll go and complete the weld. And then I just got some extension pipe, two and a half inch. Cut that the length, and then I have my thrush muffler. 
which fit perfect up in there. And then on the back side, I've got an elbow and I'm gonna bring the exhaust tip right out in front of the passenger side fender. Um, I just have too much stuff going on and the gas tank in a way to take it up over the differential and out the back. So I'm just gonna come out the side like a lot of folks do on the sports cars. So next thing is I need to get a couple tacks on here, tack these joints in place, pull it down and I'll get it on the bench and then uh, get it all welded up, put it back in and then uh, I've got hangers to hang it and uh, that'll finish that up. So uh, I need to uh, get the welder out and get these tacked up. So this is the exhaust system that I made uh, out of the car. And I got some welding to do around the flange here that I had cut. And uh, here, here, and then over here. And then I have the tailpipe that comes out the side. But uh, yeah, this is gonna look pretty cool. Muffler's all welded up and done and ready to uh, put back in the car and uh, turned out really well. And uh, if you were to make one of these, um, it's pretty easy to do, just buy the parts, just mock it up, and then uh, if you have a MIG welder, that's even better. Um, just go ahead and weld it up and uh, you're good to go. Man, the exhaust turned out really cool. Check this out. And hangers so I've got a little bit of movement when the engine torques but uh, wow looking good check that one off the list hey guys back in the workshop and uh, let's go check out the Mercedes progress here and got it down on the ground I got the wire wheels on looking sharp put the air in the tires pumped them up and uh, seats are in and uh, I had to shorten up the steering column a bit. It was just out to about here, and it was just too too much in your chest. Um, so I was able to move it back two inches, and I still have room and clearance for the body. But uh, looking good here, I think today's project, I think I'm going to get the bumpers on. So I got the rusty old brackets. I'm going to Clean them up, rust convert them with my Cora seal. I'll put the link in the description for Amazon for that. That works really good. So I think the next thing is uh, to get the bumpers on front and back and then uh, maybe take it for a ride. Also, uh, I did this off camera, but I have my electric fan relay installed uh, with a temperature probe that goes through the radiator that closes at 185 degrees trips the uh, relay, this is like an interposing relay, we used to call them, and uh, switches the heavy current uh, to run the fan. And that's all tested and uh, working great. Got some split loom uh, on everything, cleaning everything up, and uh, tidying up the wiring a little bit. So um, let's get on to the bumper brackets and get them cleaned up, and uh, let's get the bumpers on. I have my front bumper. And then these are the bits and parts and pieces. I'm assuming these are all for the bumpers. Um, the two rear bumpers, I know that. And then these are these must be the two front brackets that somehow are going to slide into this tube here. And I need to figure out how far back they go. But that looks right. And then there's this little stud that's welded into this. Looks like an exhaust pipe. That'll probably go over top of that. And then this has to be the rear tire mount. It goes on the back of the car. And then this probably has something to do with... I have no idea what these are for. Oh, well, I'll figure that one out later. But, uh, and then these have to be the... Uh, brackets for the rear bumper somehow so the puzzle continues it isn't over yet and uh, i'm going to get all this stuff rust converted and painted and then i'll piece it together a little bit later 
making more progress. Got the wheels on, got it lowered to the ground. I did drive it uh, a couple days ago and uh, tested out the brakes, clutch, everything uh, worked out great. So a friend of mine, Jerry, came down, one of my neighbors, and helped me uh, put the body on for the, I think we're up to the fourth time now. And we took it off and on probably six, seven times to get it to fit right. Did have to cut some fiberglass around the uh, bumper brackets and the frame to get it to sit down low. And then also had to do some trimming with the belt sander um, around the upper A arms. So it's clearanced here. So the movement up and down on the A arm doesn't interfere. What else? Um, this morning, I decided to uh, cut the brackets on the radiator and then uh, lean it in on an angle to get my height down uh, so I can clear the hood and uh, have some good clearance there. So fortunately, the electric fan down in there cleared okay and uh, looking good. But uh, now I need to unwrap the fenders. So this is the original packaging from 1986 when it was delivered. And this paper is that old, and it came compliments of uh, a lot of mouse turds. So I need to unwrap all this and uh, get it hosed off, cleaned up. And then this package is the uh, rear bumper fairing that goes around the bumpers. Um, that's also chocolate brown. So the car is kind of like a beigey color, and then uh, it'll have chocolate brown fenders. So. I'll bring you back, uh, I don't need to film this, unwrapping this stuff and washing it. I'll bring you back uh, once I have it kind of sitting on the wheel wells, um, see what it looks like. Okay, the fenders are unwrapped in pretty decent shape. I just got one little gouge in one of the fenders, but uh, looking good. So I got the rear fenders ready to go. Get them all mocked up. And these are the little covers, I'm assuming. These are gonna go somehow like this. And then these big ones down here, these are the bumper brackets ready to go. And we got the fronts ready to mock up. All cleaned, the mouse certified, if that's the same for a word. No more mouse turds. But uh, looking really good here. Um, again, got the radiator all plumbed and back up. So the car is in running condition now. I need to modify the air cleaner, the original stock one. It's not going to work, so I'm going to go with a little 9-inch aftermarket, and I'll have to adapt it to the two holes. Usually your car just has one stud down through the middle. This has two for a two-barrel, whatever. So I'll modify it, make that work. So I think that's enough for one video. Let's go ahead and wrap it up. And uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Again, a lot of the techniques, if you look at my playlist on all my other videos that I have, e-bikes, solar, hot rod builds, diesel trucks, um, a lot of it's meant to be a teaching videos. But if you've been following this build, um, you pretty much can apply this to any vehicle um, that you're building or, or thinking about doing. Everything from the brakes, the engine, the clutch, uh, just follow along and uh, hopefully you learn a few things. I know I'm, I'm still learning and in the process here of uh, figuring things out. But uh, the puzzle continues and uh, take it back up in the next video. Thanks for watching.